We are back for a new instalment of EV Morning. We are talking Tesla in Alaska, all electric container ships, Biden's recent EV comments, and a lot more. So you grab yourself a coffee and settle in for the news. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Martin Lee. And if you like what we do here, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Let's get into it. Now we hear so much news about Tesla. There's something going on every day. It's hard sometimes to pick out other bits of news apart from the actual cars themselves, of which they've sold 2 million now. But other parts of the business are still really interesting. So I was surprised to hear about the amount of power walls that Tesla has now sold and had installed by their partners. The number just hits a quarter of a million units. That's a lot of people having power walls at their home in their garage to power themselves. About 50,000 of those coming in the last half year alone. With each pack installed, that is 13.5 kilowatt hours. That is 675 megawatt hours of storage in the last three months and also 7,000 Model S Plaid equivalents. So a lot of batteries required. Earlier packs had a little less storage, but the total capacity, if we knew, would still be hugely impressive. Well, staying with Tesla for another brief story, we wanted to head up to Alaska. It can get a little bit chilly up there. It's an understatement. And it's quite remote, so I was delighted to hear that Tesla have opened their first supercharger in Alaska. There are four 250 kilowatt V3 stalls installed in Soldotna, south of Anchorage. This addition nudges Tesla even further ahead of the 30,000 units installed globally to date. Although there are no service centers or showrooms nearby, Tesla will still seek to have a presence in the market with the addition of superchargers. I hope it encourages more people in the area to consider going electric. Let's talk about an electric container ship. The Yarra Berkeland has made its maiden voyage, and I'm so excited to see things like this happening. It's an 80 meter long, battery container ship. Not a ship containing batteries as part of its cargo, but rather powered by batteries. Also got some autonomous capability as well. The chemical company Yara International can load 120 of their 20-foot containers onto the ship, and it covers the Porsgrun to Brevik route. It's about 10 miles, but doing it on pure electric power means they'll avoid 40,000 diesel truck journeys every single year this is an operation well the boat has a seven megawatt hour battery has an eco cruising speed of around six or seven knots but if they want to put their foot down they can reach the dizzying speed of 13 knots <laughs> not really built for speed but it is built for power there are two 900 kilowatt azipal pods and two 700 kilowatt tunnel thrusters hopefully it's the first of many of its kind. Now, I hate to keep coming back to this story, but the Bolt issue is one that uh, just keeps rumbling on. Initially, the Orion assembly plant was to take a three-week break from mid-November, but in the last few days, we hear that GM's spokesperson, Dan Flores, confirming the production will cease on new vehicles for the remainder of the year. They say it so they can concentrate on doing the recall program. However, if you read into the statement they gave, it may well be a good bit into next year before we see the production resuming. And I really do hope this story runs its course quickly and that GM get back on track. So, amidst this news, I was maybe a little surprised, you could say, when the US president made his remarks at the launch of GM's Factory Zero in Detroit a little while ago. In his speech, he said, In the auto industry, Detroit is leading the world in electric vehicles. Okay. And then addressed Mary Barra, she is the CEO of GM, and he said, You did it, Mary. You electrified the entire automobile industry. <clears throat> Let's move on. Let's stay in the US for a moment and talk about developments in Ford's EV push. They've announced that they're about to hit 200,000 reservations for the F-150 Lightning. It's great news, and the CEO Jim Farley reckons that more than 80% of those are going to be converted into actual sales. 
pre-production models have been coming through since September, and Ford are now at the stage of looking forward to series production, that is still due in springtime. But I don't think that 200,000 reservation number paints the whole picture at all. There's going to be a huge amount of people out there that are EV curious. Some are EV skeptical and some are just waiting to see what the truck is like when it turns out. Lots of fleet buyers as well haven't fully crunched the numbers. And when they do work out how cheap EVs are to run, ongoing costs, lack of servicing, etc. When they see their friends and colleagues riding in these things, they see the speed and powering their work tools and that huge frunk in action. Well, I think many more will be changing over from combustion. And remember, the Ford F-Series adds up to around a million trucks every single year. The F-Series alone is bigger than so many entire car companies. It's a massive market and Ford's biggest problem is going to be satisfying demand with scaling up production quick enough. So there you have it, folks. That was our quick rundown of the world, hunting down the most interesting EV stories on battery storage, even on electric container ships. Let us know what you think in the comments below about the kind of stories that we pick to bring you these news episodes here on the channel. I'd love to keep the conversation going. What do you make of that electric container ship? How did Biden's comment on General Motors stack up with you? Hmm. Thank you so much for watching the show today. If you like what we do, give us a thumbs up. It tells our bosses that you like this video and they'll get us to make some more just like it. And I'll see you on the next one.